Hi, today we are going to study the DOM, the Document Object Model, and this brings us into the world of the browser. So we're in Watts 3020 DOM 1. We are, worked a little in the browser in the Hello World Cause where we were able to enter hello or, you know, we could um, process a form essentially, and you might want to look back at that um, code now as we learn how that all works that we have um, a form with an input field and a button and we're able to extract data out of that form and update the the HTML content and in fact with JavaScript we can update pretty much anything on this page on a browser page and the way that we do that is that we interact with a document object model so we've studied objects objects have data and they have functions um, we've seen that even the primitive values have wrapper functions, so we're able to use an index of to search for strings within a string. Well, in fact, um, the whole browser has a model known as the document object model, and it defines a hierarchical structure starting with the window, the document, nav bar, sections, footers, forms. Anything that we code in HTML is, is accessible via the document object model. And each of these um, will have data associated with it, as well as functions, so that we can modify these. Um, we can modify these elements. We can remove them. We can change their CSS. We can uh, move them to a different location on the page. So we have a lot of programmatic control using the DOM. Um, now we're going to discuss, we're going to do uh, tutorials around vanilla JavaScript and jQuery. So these are two different programmatic modes of accessing the DOM and manipulating it. And really, uh, the re I recommend that vanilla JavaScript be what you focus on. I think um, jQuery is a library that made working with JavaScript in the DOM a lot easier when it came out and that was probably 10 years ago and over time JavaScript through ECMAScript uh, has become more sophisticated and you can actually do everything that you could do in jQuery in, in, a, in about as much code. So jQuery in the beginning really seemed to save you writing a lot of JavaScript code to access and modify the DOM. But now you can do that with vanilla JavaScript. But you still will see a lot of jQuery around. You'll see it in Bootstrap. You'll see it in many, many places. So what we're doing in this um, tutorials is we're going to actually create the same a page, a form that updates a to-do list using both of them. And you can read about that here and you can see that jQuery, you'll see that dollar with the with the parens and a CSS specifier and basically the dollar is just an alias for the function called jQuery and this function takes specifiers, CSS specifiers it goes out and gets them, it puts them into an, an um, object where you can call functions on them. So you'll see how that worked, but in vanilla JavaScript we have document.querySelector and that actually, and document query selector all, those two functions that are part of the document object actually give you the same uh, abilities that this dollar does. And in some ways, uh, I kind of like it better. And you will um, have an opportunity to see, to compare them yourself and, and see the difference. But they're both basically aimed at the same thing, which is to be able to create a, a dynamic web page. So um, HTML must render before creating objects. So you're going to see that you're going to be trying to create objects off of items in your HTML. Well, you can't, the, your code won't find those items until they're rendered. And so we want to um, always uh, do some something to make sure that, that the code is rendered. And that means in <clears throat> vanilla JavaScript, 
wrapping all of our code in a document at event listener DOM content loaded event. So this DOM content loaded is an event fired by the browser to indicate that the data is ready, that the data has or that the elements have been rendered. And so <clears throat> we want to, in our typical event handling manner, we've, we've been doing this with Node. Um, now we will have uh, strings that contain browser events and here you can see an arrow function that is capturing that event and allowing us to then perform activities on the DOM knowing that the content's loaded. And in jQuery it's dollar document ready that that tells us that it's okay to start working with the DOM. So you'll see that. Um, so GUIs, you know, we're, we're moving out of the command line and into a GUI world, very interactive, and we want to be able to capture those events and use them in JavaScript, and the browser will definitely help us with that. So event handlers, we have this um, ability to, there's a, a number of events, and I think I have some references to that in yeah, JavaScript events. There, there's a number of events. We've got clicks, submits, change, all sorts of things that we can listen for on a on a object. And the object can be document or it can be any level in here of the DOM. So we can listen for all the way down to a div. We can listen for a click on a div or a span. <clears throat> Forms, so we're going to be using forms, and they the forms the purpose is to collect data, and when the user, if there's a type equals submit attribute on a button, then when you click on that button, it will fire a submit event, and we'll be able to detect that in our code and then act however we want. Now the script tag, so there's various ways to get script into the into the web page you can actually put a script tag right inside the HTML. Usually it goes at the bottom, the idea being that you, you want to get the, the, the HTML loaded before you start writing, before you start calling functions on the page. But um, you can also add a script with a source equals and have your JavaScript in a separate file. And that's the way I'm generally going to be working. So we're going to get into this and do some tutorials and the tutorials will basically involve creating this to-do list with some functionality around clicking things that are done. And we'll do it in vanilla JavaScript and then we'll do it in jQuery and then I will turn it over to you to create a similar list but instead of just uh, marking things done, when something is done it will move it to a, a new list and that I'm going to leave you to do it yourself but I will give you some hints on how to do that. All right um, and then you'll be turning in the assignment so now you'll be pushing the code you'll, you'll be of course forking this repository cloning it working on it and then you'll push this code and you'll actually be able to render uh, as we did in the CalSay to GitHub IO the the running code because we're running in the browser now we can we can actually test this in in the browser and you'll be able to do a setting in github that will create um, a web page where we can see the code running just like we have out here all right so let's get going on the tutorials so before we can start we need to fork this and i'm going to go ahead and fork that uh, and uh, let's see, now that I've got it forked, uh, I'm going to clone it. So let's clone it with SSH, grab that address, go to my working area, get clone, and code. Okay, and bring it up in, in Visual Studio Code. Um, and you can see in here we have uh, two, a, two uh, different uh, web pages running. We've got a to-do vanilla script with an index, 
and then we've got a to do jQuery with an index. And uh, right now, if I open with Live Server, so I've got the Live Server, and I add something to my list, nothing happens because we haven't got anything coded there. And the same thing in in the in the jQuery. So um, what we're going to want to do here, and there is some CSS that's been provided, so you can look at that if you want. Um, but if we look at the index HTML, let's see how this is set up. We are picking up the style sheet. We have a favicon here. <clears throat> we have a script tag picking up the J JavaScript index file. So right now there are just a number of to-dos in here. Um, and then um, we have a form that contains an input with type equals text. And I leave it to you to read on the, the type, the form input types. Um, you know, there's a number of them. There's a type equals number, type equals date, type equals URL, but we're just picking up text here. And then we have a button with a type equals submit. So what that means is that um, when I click on that button, I'm going to fire a submit event, and then I can do whatever I want in here. Now I have a form set up here with a class to-do list. Um, sometimes um, you might see IDs when we're going to be working with them in, in JavaScript, but, in this, but you can use IDs or classes as your specifiers. And so in this, in this unordered list, we're going to be adding list items that are created based on the input that the user makes. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. We'll go to the instructions. Um, so I've got them loaded up here. Uh, and the, and the to-dos tell us that we're going to add a DOM content loaded event listener to signal that the DOM's ready to access. So these event listeners can be sort of uh, tricky to read sometimes because what you've got in, in this is you've got an add event listener and it has a string with the event in it. And then the second parameter is a function and that function will contain what you want to do when that event's fired. So if we look at the code here for the index in JS, we have document add event listener. Okay, and we want, we, we want it to listen for submit, so we'll just fix that. So we add the event, and then we want to add any, a signal that the user is submitting a form. Um, Okay, so that's what we've got going there. And then we want to, so we're basically wrapping all the code in this event. So, um, oh, I see. We want to, um, actually, let's go back and look at this. We want to wrap everything. So here's, here's, a, here's what we had before. We actually want to set this up and wrap the entire set of listeners and activities in a DOM content loaded. Uh, so what we need to do is to, I don't have a snippet for that, but what we're going to do is have an event listener for DOM content loaded. Okay, and um, that's something that we, we saw an example of back here, DOM content loaded. And so that listener has got to wrap all the way to the bottom. You can see there's an error right now, so we're going to close the function and close the listener and format that. So that can be kind of hard to see. You can use these fold up uh, in Visual Studio Code to wrap up big chunks of code, and now you can see that we've got a DOM content loaded around this entire whatever, whatever we're going to do <clears throat> once the once the page is rendered. Okay, so we that takes care of that. Then we're going to listen to the submit event. So that is this to do. Uh, then we want to uh, call a function that prevents the click from bubbling up. And what that means is that the way that JavaScript likes to work is that when you have an event and you capture it, if any of the parent elements could benefit from hearing it, JavaScript sends them the submit event. But that can cause problems because um, you may not even, you maybe don't even know what all of the parents are or what they're doing. So generally, what we like to do is to 
do a prevent default. So we, whatever we, in this event name, you can name it whatever you want. Um, it could be just E. It's, it's just the event is always handed off to the, to this hand, to the listener code because it has a lot of information about the event and you might need it. But we can call a function on that prevent default and that prevents the bubbling up. So that, that keeps us just working right here with um, the, the actual submit button that triggered this event. The next thing we want to do is add a selector that selects input elements with the at attribute equal to item input. And that's because the name of the text is item input. So we're using the, the convention that we, we always provide a a name for our inputs and so we want to and we're going to use document query selector now there's document query selector and document query selector all and selector just picks up one element so no matter what you call for whether it's an id or a class it's only going to pick up the first element ids would be unique so you would only get one but classes there could be more than one but you will only get the first one so what we want to do is use the selector for the class item input and it's going to be in quotes and item input all right um, and then so we can so this is what we're doing here is we're we're going to actually go into our dom find this item input the first one and get it set up as an object and once it's an object so the query selector returns an object that represents this element where item input is a class then once we have the object we can call a function or a property the extract a property here the value and we can pull so the value out of that item input so what that means is that in our in our page here this is our item input we can actually grab whatever the user has entered in there. Okay, so um, let's see, to do add a selector that creates, ah, we really want, this is what we really want for our selector, I'm sorry. Um, we want the name, we want, we because it's not a class, we want, it is an input with the name equal item input. It wasn't a class, so it was the name equal. So we're using sort of an advanced selector input with name equals item input. Okay, so not, not class. Document query selector can work on classes too, but in this case, this wasn't a class. This was the name, so we want that name attribute. But this gets us item input, and then we can pull the value out of it. We can test that they did enter a value by looking at the length not equal to zero. And now we want to create a new list item because we're going to add it to the list. So we have a chunk of code here that does that for us. And this is where JavaScript can get to be a lot of code for a little bit of change because we're going to create a new list item. Um, we're going to create a checkbox because remember we're going to have this checkbox next to it. We're going to set the attribute type for our checkbox element to checkbox. So this is a, a new input type. We're going to um, append uh, a child. So we're going to um, take our list item and append a, the checkbox element to it. And then we're going to create a label and we're going to put the item value, so whatever the user entered, into this label called inner HTML and we will append the label element to the new item which is list item. So if you picture it's like three levels we have a list item that contains um, that contains a label and the label has a value and then we have a checkbox that is also in there. So we have this list item that has a checkbox and then um, this new item uh, the, this uh, has a label. 
So um, let me see if I can make that a little clearer. I guess the best way to think of it as the hierarchy is you have this list item and it contains two children. One of them is a checkbox and the other one is a label that holds the value that the user entered. So this is, and, and we're just using a pen child to attach the checkbox and the label to the list item. Um, so let's just grab that code and we'll just create this item. And the next thing that we want to do, well, I guess this, this actually goes with this to do, create a list item with a checkbox and a label containing the input string. Um, actually, I might keep this as a comment. So just because it kind of clearly states what's going on. Because sometimes if you're reading this kind of code, it can get tough to see what the developer is trying to do. OK, um, the next thing I want to do is get a reference or a variable, basically, to the list. And then I'm going to append the list item. So with this, I'm going to use query selector and grab the to-do list. So that is this unordered list. And then I'm going to append this new item that I've created to the list. And then I will clear out the input value. So just setting the value to empty string clears out for the user to input. All right, let's just try that so far. We'll, we'll get to this uh, dealing with clicking on the um, checkbox. But let's just see what this looks like. So if I go to my vanilla to do and I add test. So I can either with the submit button as opposed to just so with it with this add button I could add a click event and handle that but with submit the tradition on the web is that if you're using a submit you can either click on the thing that fires the submit or you can just hit the enter key. So I'm just going to hit the enter key and you can see that this unordered list here um, if I inspect that, now has the, a list item with an input type equals checkbox and a label. So that looks like it's working well. Then um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to handle the click event on that checkbox. So we add an event listener, a click event listener to the checkbox. We provide a function that, that is going to take this event. Um, and then the, if you notice, I'm using the word this. So this is a situation where instead of using the arrow function where this, I would have to define it inside of the curly braces, I can actually reference this in here, and it will mean the thing that I clicked on, so the checkbox. And it makes it an easy way to, to just get a hold of that item. I don't have to go out and use query selector to get it. I can just reference this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the next sibling, so if the checkbox is next sibling, would be the label. I'm going to set its style, so its CSS, to line through. And that will put the line out. Otherwise, so I'm going to actually check. I'm going to say if, if it is equal to line through, set it to nothing. Otherwise, set it to line through. So I'm creating a toggle, which means you know when I click on that checkbox, if it's got a line through it, then it will take the line away, but if it doesn't, it will add it. So if I go in here and let's refresh this. Oh, wait, we need to add this to our code. So let's see. Go back here. We need to grab this little chunk of code. And it's this to do. Oh, and you can see that we actually look like it's already been set in here. So it's saying if we add this event listener to strike out the label. So if the text decoration is line through, set it to blank. Otherwise, take it out. So I'm going to just take this to do out and format this. And now that should work. So let's take a look and see if it does. So now if I type in test, if I click on test, it takes it out. I can add another. OK, you know, do homework. Um, and I can say, oh, I'm done. No, I'm not. 
So we have this kind of toggle effect. So that looks pretty good. Um, this is how we would implement it using vanilla jQuery. And really the big, you'll notice this is really what gets us access to the DOM. All right, let's check this in. Okay. All right, so that's checked in. Okay. All right, so we got it working with vanilla JavaScript. Now we're going to basically get the same thing going only with um, jQuery. So our HTML looks the same. We'll be processing the same HTML, but you can see that we've added a script for jQuery here. So we were using a CDN for jQuery to pick up version 3.4. And we got to get that this script tag for jQuery in before our own JavaScript because we're going to be referencing that jQuery library. So it has to already be there and, and defined in order for us to get to it. Um, and then inside our, our, our own index, we've got a number of to-dos, and we're going to see how this would work with jQuery. So let's go take a look uh, at the notes on this. So first of all, we have to wrap everything in a document ready. So let's see if I can do that. We're going to do a document ready. And again, this has to wrap around everything. And we need to close that function. Uh, oops. So, okay. What did we start with here? Ah, we had, we had part of it here. We had the, but um, we need to, um, we need to have the document ready in place here. So document ready. So here document ready, um, the function for the event handler starts there, so it ends there. So that looks good. <clears throat> so you'll notice if you fold this up, that document ready provides the event similar to the way that the event handlers in vanilla do. I'm going to just use an arrow function because I'm not going to be referring to the document. I don't need the this. Um, for the document here. So that that gets us to the point where we'll be able to access everything rendered in the DOM. And then uh, wrap all code related to the user submit. So you can see this looks a little different. Now we use jQuery, which is the dollar sign function, to, and, a, um, and a reference to the ID for the form. And then we call dot submit. So we don't attach a submit event. We just call dot submit it because the jQuery creates an object that we can just call submit on. And again, we have an event and we want to keep the code from bubbling up. And it's the same, same code as vanilla. We just event that we capture in our event handler, prevent default. Okay, now we need to find a single input, but need it to be as a jQuery object. So this is where things get a little different, because the dollar on this input type equals name, that gets us, that gets us um, actually an array of inputs, or an array. So the dollar get, returns an array of elements. Um, even if there are no matching elements, you'd get an empty array. Um, but when there's exactly one element, we can just grab the zeroth. So this is an array. We'll just grab the zeroth, which is the first element. But then we need to wrap it again in order to be able to call functions on it. Because you can see in the next line, to get the value out, we call the dot val function. So this is how we, this is the code that we need in jQuery in order to extract that name value. There may be other ways to do this. I'm kind of trying to make it really explicit how this works, but also trying to make it kind of match the same steps that we do in vanilla JavaScript. So now our item value contains the value that the user entered in the form for the, for the item input. And we check that the length is not equal to zero. 
and then we're ready to create a new item. And if we look at how the new item create, it's a little different. We, we use the dollar with the list item, and then we pull the zeroth element out, again, because things tend to be created as collections, as an array. And then we create a new checkbox. So we put type equals checkbox, zeroth element. We create a new label. We have a label, and we set the HTML. This is like our inner HTML. In, in vanilla, we set it to the item value. And we pull the zeroth out of that. And then we append, we can append both the checkbox and the label all in one call to the new item. So we get the same structure as before. We have a list item with an input type equals checkbox and a label containing the value that the user entered. So let's put that into our code. And then um, now we can take out that to do. We want to get a reference to the list. So similar to what we did before, we use jQuery and the, and the class to-do list class. And because it returns an array, we take the zeroth element and we append this new item to it. So that's how we get our item into the list. And then we clear the value. And we can use that dot val function to clear it, to, to change the input. Um, and now the checkbox toggle. So this is going to look a little different. We use the dollar jQuery, and we use this uh, pseudo, for, pseudo uh, specifier for the checkbox. And we call the change function on it. And then we, of course, prevent default. We don't want it, this to bubble up. And then we check, um, we do, uh, now we are using a function. So we have access to this, which is the, the checkbox. We say, is it checked? Um, then we want to change the label CSS text dec decoration to line through. If it's not checked, then we're going to change the label to none. So instead of toggling, is, is it got a line in it, it doesn't have a line in it, we're actually checking whether it is in the checked state or not. So we can grab this and put it in our to-do and format that. So that's, let's just take a look now and see how this is running. So we'll open this and test. It goes into our list and then it gets checked and unchecked. So I leave it to you to spend a little time comparing, because these are very similar, These this index.js for vanilla and the one for jQuery. But you'll be able to see how that jQuery function works and how it provides its own um, function. And there's really a lot of documentation on the jQuery website. So you can look up all of the different things that you can do with it. Um, so like our val function takes you right in there and explains what it does, you know, and how it can be used. Lots of examples. So uh, let's go ahead and check this in. Git styles. Okay, git and jQuery git push. Okay. All right, so that takes care of coding up. So now we have two really good examples of how we can create a list, a, a to-do list. Um, and this could be generalized to a lot of different applications where you're collecting data and then displaying it on the page. We, have, we can do it in jQuery. We can do it in vanilla JS. All right, the final, um, the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of create our own list. So we have this three list. And we just have a get keep. And if you look at the instructions on this, it tells you for this exercise, you're going to set up HTML, CSS, JavaScript files, and write code to create a list. Once you've completed the list above, you can use that code to help you do this. So it's just going to be copy and paste to kind of get this going. And then once you have the current list working in there, modify the code so that when you click on the list to indicate done, you move the item to a done list um, so that that you'll add to your HTML. So we're going to create another list um, element, and it's going to be a done list. And that, and when we click on that checkbox, rather than marking it done, um, we're just going to remove it from the kind of in-process list 
into a list that is labeled done. So let's look at how we can, can do that. I think the first thing that we should do, we can copy that code as it suggests. So that just, and you get to pick if you're going to do vanilla or jQuery. You can do either one. I think I'm just going to take the vanilla and so I'm just going to copy these files into this list. So now they're all available here and um, it's called vanilla, but this is um, my to-do list really. This is, and it is still vanilla. Um, I'm still going to use vanilla JavaScript. So it's going to bring in the local index.html, um, which now that I've coded it, if I run this, was three, it should be working. Uh, yeah, so it's working. But I want to change this so I have this to do list. I want to change it so that I have a done list. And when I click on this, it moves it to the done list. So let's take a look at that. Um, all we need to do is let's create, it doesn't need to be in the form because I'm not going to be clicking on anything in it to submit. So I can just create like um, out here, I guess I can just create like an H2 done list. And then I can add an unordered list with a, I'll give it an ID equals done. So I've got an unordered list. And this is the list that I'll be adding my done elements to. I'll remove them from the to-do list and I'll move them into this done list. So let's go see what kind of code I would need for that. Um, basically, I'm going to be changing this checkbox. So right now, the click event is just doing the line through. And I'm going to just comment this out for now. That's just that command slash comment out the whole thing. And I'm going to set this up so that I get the value so I'm, I'm checking the box, and so I'm going to grab the value out of that. And right now, I, I'm going to leave the styling to you, but you might want to style this so it goes in the center as well. But um, what I'm going to do is, I'm, when, I, when I check on this, I'm going to grab the sibling value. So that that's the first thing that I want to do, is let the value equal this dot next next sibling um, dot inner HTML so that'll get me the the value in that label and then I'm going to create a new item new item element and this is going to be document create element a new list element and then I'm going to create a new label new label and this will be document create element label and then I'm going to set the inner HTML of the label well, let's make that spelled correctly new label inner HTML is going to equal the value. So I'm just creating a whole new list item that just contains a label. And then I will go to my document query selector. And I just need the one list. And it's got an ID, so I'll use the hash. And I'll append child. You notice that these um, are you can chain with these functions and chaining is accomplished by the fact that every time you call one of when I call query selector it returns an object that has functions attached to it so um, I've got this um, list item and I can do an append child and I'll put the new label in there so this label that I created and then I want, so now that I've got it in the new, in the done list, I'm going to remove it from 
I'll use do this dot parent element remove. So this grabs the list item of the in process and removes this. So that's kind of why this can be useful, and so I'm not going to use an arrow function. I'll use the standard function there. Let's see if this works. So we're going to grab this, open it up. Um, first of all, I add to, to my to-do list, and then when I click on this, notice it removed it from the to-do list and moved it to the done list. So I could have A, A, B, B, C, C, C. And I can just add that. Okay, now it seems to be not behaving exactly like um, a list item would. So let's inspect and see what's happened there. So we have, oh, our label. So our label is not a, um, it's not a block item. It's an inline item. So um, I could change that and maybe not use, I could use a div in there, or, or actually that should be, that should be within a list item. So I don't really, so somehow I'm not getting my list item added. So let me take a look at that. I, so I, pro I probably have a bug in here because I meant to be adding list items. So I did create a list item, but, and I created a label, but I added, the label to the list rather than the list item. So what I really need to do is append the label to the list item. Append uh, the label. And then I, I, it doesn't really matter what order I do these, but if I want to keep the label code together. Okay, so I created a list item, I created a label, I gave the label a value, I appended the label to the list item, and now I want to append the list item to the to the list. So let's see how that works. So I'll see A B B C C okay and then let's go that down. So if I do B, C, yes. Okay, so that's what I want to achieve. So this is a do-it-yourself and there's no code snippets, but you should be able to follow along with how this works. So really you're just kind of creating DOM structures using your JavaScript and you know, however you're accessing the DOM, either it's vanilla JavaScript or jQuery. All right, so let's check this in. Git add. Knit uh, three. Let's see. Get push. Okay, and we're going to go out and look at this um, because we want to set up. We want to set up some settings so that we can render it. And so we'll go down here to GitHub Pages Master Branch. Um, I have to check, let's see, check enforce HTTPS. You may not have to do that if you don't have a DNS name. Um, and then let's refresh. And this is now rendered. And um, okay, so here's our list. So I've, I've provided in here. Uh, an index.html that just gives links to these different directories. So we're in the three list and we've got this and we've got that. So this is looking good. So let's grab this link here and we will add that to our description area the website saved. So now anybody that comes to our code can try it out over here. The vanilla, the jQuery, or the list. The list that, that builds another list. Alright, so that's all we need to do. Um, and then you would just turn in this, this link here, um, the rendered link, and this link here, the .com, the code link. Alright, 